If you're making a PS1 style game, but you're struggling to get it looking authentic, then here are some tips and tricks that you might not know to get your game from looking like this, to this. First of all, textures. By default, most game engines will import textures with some kind of texture filtering, but the PS1 did not support texture filtering, so let's switch this off. In Unity, this can be done in the import settings by changing the filter mode to point. In Godot, this can be done by re-importing the texture with the filter option disabled. Next up, materials. Most game engines by default will apply some kind of lit shader to materials, giving them a reflective look. This however is not accurate to the PS1, so let's change this. In Unity, we can do this by changing the shader to unlit. This is already looking better, but we can take this further by using shaders to emulate the other features of the PS1's rendering, such as the color depth, dithering, and vertex jitter. For Unity, you can download this URP PSX shader. For this video, we'll focus on implementing this shader in Unity, but there are also similar shaders for Godot. You can find some links for this in the description. First of all, let's look at the vertex jitter and affine warping. Once you've downloaded the shader and imported it into your project, Go into each of the materials in your project and then switch the material shader to the shader named URP underscore PSX underscore PBR underscore master, found under the shader graphs tab. Note that you'll have to have the shader graphs package installed for this to work. Now you have options to enable the vertex jittering, affine texture warping, as well as color depth precision for this material. You also have options to change the color depth and vertex resolution. Decreasing this will increase the amount by which the vertices will jitter. Now that we've applied these to our materials, let's take a look at the full screen effects provided by this pack. First of all, open up your renderer data asset. To add these effects, we will first need to add them here as renderer features. When you click add renderer feature, you have the choice of adding a CRT, dithering, fog, or pixelation effect. To start with, let's add the pixelation feature. Next, you need to add a global volume object to your hierarchy. Then create a new volume profile, and then add the pixelation volume to it. Now we can modify the pixelation amount in the horizontal and vertical directions, as well as adding a global color depth precision. This same process applies to all of the other effects. Add the renderer feature to the renderer data asset, and then add a volume object to your hierarchy. This way you can control just how authentic you want your game to look. That's all for now. As always, if you're interested in taking a closer look at the Unity project for this video, the project files, as well as those for all of my other videos, are available on my Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.